Aloha, Mr. Babayan. Um, I just want to say mahalo for being here today. Thank you. And I honor you as a student of Papa Mo. He's very, very dear to my family and I. So I honor you as well as his student. Um, are you familiar with the song, The Beauty of Mauna Kea by Keola Beamer? I believe so. Thank you. Um, there's a verse that says, if I should be forgotten and a thousand miles away, still I would recall the beauty of Mauna Kea. Are you familiar with that verse? Yes, I am. Okay. So when you're on your voyages and away at sea for days and weeks at a time, what do you look forward to seeing when you return home to Hawaii Island? Um, well, I, I, I've sailed, um, I've sailed back from uh, the South Pacific to Hawaii five times. Um, and I always have expectations because it's always been the same, um, same arrival for me that I will see the summits of Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa as I approach the island. So that's kind of like my, uh, my beacon. Um, but understanding that, that, that I use other visual clues mm -hmm. to actually turn the canoe into the, okay. into the big island. Okay. Um, but she is one of the first things that you see when you return home, that welcomes you home. Yeah, but I know where the island okay. is. Can you describe the feeling that you feel when you see her for the first time? Well, yeah, there's different roles and different perspectives. One is as a crew member and a sub, and a, a assistant to the principal navigator. And then there's the, uh, the time that stands out in my mind was uh, the first time that I was the principal navigator and the responsibility for bringing that crew back to Hawaii fell on my sh shoulders. And um, I had already measured the Southern Cross uh, to, the, uh, to its height because I had studied at Kalai. So I knew when I was passing by the southern boundary of the islands, and all I needed to do was turn the canoe downwind and let the wind blow me into the, uh, into the big island. And um, as we approached, we were moving really, really slowly, not very quickly at all. And um, I went to the bow of the canoe, and I turned around, and all the crew was, was doing what they do eating sardines and onions, playing <laughs> cards, and having a conversation. And I um, stood on a bow and I was listening to uh, um, All Hawaii Stand Together. Um, I had a headset on and, and, and the horizon was cloudy. And in the middle of the verse, the clouds parted and I could see Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa and the saddle that connected the both of them. And I immediately turned around behind to tell the guys, hey, the island's right here. As I turned around and I looked at them, I said, no, this is not for you guys. This is for me. This is my time. This is my time. And so I, 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 I stood on the bow. I watched the island emerge. And then the clouds came and covered the, the island and it hit it. And that night when we had our crew meeting, I told them, I told the crew that the navigation was over because I've already seen the island and that all you need to do is steer the same course and the island is going to appear. And as soon as the sun set, the lights of Hilo illuminated the, the island. And I was kind of, I was lying down and resting and I heard Nainoa tell the crew that island is exactly where Kalepa said it would be. So that's the so, most powerful moment in my life as a navigator. We're seeing Mauna Kea as you approached home. Seeing the big island, seeing Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, and the okay, saddle. Mahalo, beacon. thank you. And this feeling that you felt as you approached home, was it a, a comforting feeling to it, see this mountain? It was a feeling of immense pride. Pride and comfort. Oh, was there like a mothering feeling? It was a welcoming feeling. A welcoming feeling, thank you. You stated in your testimony, page three, paragraph one, that you firmly believe that the highest level of desecration rests in actions 
that remove the opportunity and choices from the kind of future our youth can own. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Does this statement also apply to removing opportunity for Native Hawaiians to learn about their culture, their land, and their ancestors' traditional way of life? Yes, I believe it does apply. Thank you. Do you have a degree in astrology, Mr. Babayan? A degree in astrology? No, I don't. How did you obtain your knowledge of the stars? I studied on my own personal time and my own endeavors, and I worked with uh, collaborating navigators. And you also stated that you were taught by Papa Mao. Yes. Do you believe that the most valuable knowledge can be taught in a classroom? No. Thank I, you. Thank you. Can you please describe the setting of which you were taught by Papa Mo? I was on board the canoe. Were you ever taught on land? Um, I was taught on land by Mao. Can he, you describe the setting? It was in my office in Lahaina. He drew his, uh, I never asked for it, but he drew his compass out for me and he left it on my desk. As a Po navigator, it is considered if one of, if not the highest honor of traditional navigators. Is that true? Yes, it is uh, in the hierarchy of the Sadawali's tradition. Thank you. And when you received this rank by the Sadawali's people, how were you awarded this honor? It was in a ceremony. Um, men gathered in a circle. There was different ritual steps that we had to participate in. Was there a trophy that you were given oh, or no, a there, medal? There was a certificate. Certificate. There's no plate with your name on it? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Why is that? Is that because the Sadawalis people are very simple people? Yes, they use things from their environment to recognize you. Thank you. Would it be accurate to say that it was the people of Sadawal and Papa Mao who helped us reclaim this traditional navigational knowledge? No, that's not accurate. Okay, can, can you explain why? Yes, you see, our system of wayfinding uh, by today's mariners is a hybrid system. It was developed by navigator Nainoa Thompson and that occurred in the absence of Mao because in 1976 he left the voyage and I know I had a great passion about learning uh, the art of, of navigation, non-instrument navigation. So I know fell back on the only resource he could which was academics. So he built his system, the system we use today uh, as, as uh, modern day navigators is built upon academics. Later on in his training, at the very, very end in 1989, there was something that was missing. And he, in conversation with his father, his father recognized the, the problem. And he said, you need to go back and get your teacher. And so he found out that Mao was going to be in Saipan. He returned to Saipan and he asked Mao to come back to Hawaii. Mao was noncommittal, uh, told him, just go and you'll heal for me. And uh, several months later, he got a phone call from the customs agent at the Honolulu International Airport. Said he has this guy Mao Pi Lug, and he says he's supposed to come down and pick him up. And that's how Mao ended up coming to Nainoa's teaching. And then that rounded out Nainoa's academics with a traditional system of wayfinding. And I've asked, and I just want to share this. I've asked Nainoa. Because I was just a local boy, I questioned the, the usefulness of academics. And I asked him, why, why is all these college courses so important to your navigation system? And he says that academics grounds the tradition to something deep and something, uh, something pa, some kind of iki. So to clarify, we use a hybrid system. Thank you. But, um, but 
it is true that Papua Mao and the Sotawalis people did play a very important role yeah. in reclaiming those traditions. Papa Mao did not necessarily settle all these people. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you consider yourself a master navigator? No, I don't. I, just, can I qualify that answer? Yes. They say, the tradition is, you can never be a master until your teacher dies. Um, and I'm, I'm really uncomfortable with being recognized as a master. That means I, I, I hold all kinds of knowledge. and. To me, I'm just a student of the art. I'm not, I'm, I may be further ahead of, of other navigators in the training program, but I don't consider myself a master. Thank you. So perhaps with the advanced technology and scientific exploration that a 30 meter telescope could provide, would that then elevate you to the rank of a master? No, it would not. Thank you. Mr. Babayan, is it true that in your witness statement, October 11, 2016, you stated that the TMT project is consistent with work of our ancestral forebearers and is done for the benefit of tomorrow's generations? Yes. Would you say that it is a common practice for those Native Hawaiian ancestral forebearers to do things for the benefit of future generations? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Babayan, are you familiar with large ancient Hawaiian structures like Pu'u Kohola, yes, Mo'okini, Ahuena, and Pu'u Honua Ohonona? Yes, I am. Thank you. Are you familiar with any large ancient, ancient Hawaiian structures built on top of Mauna Kea? No. Are you familiar with any large ancient Hawaiian structures built atop the summits of the highest mountain tops on any Hawaiian island. Uh, no, not, not large structures. Do you believe that these native Hawaiian ancestral forebears who did things for the benefit of future generations chose to keep the summit of Mauna Kea free from human structures for some reason related to their beliefs at that time? I believe uh, they did choose to keep the summit area, well, the summit area was, uh, was pristine, so yes. Thank you. Is it true that thousands of Native Hawaiians who protested the placement of human structures atop the summit of Mauna Kea, like the TMT, Excuse or actually specifically the TMT, is it true that thousands of Native Hawaiians protested the placement of human structures such as TMT? I, I, I know there was a lot of Hawaiians. I'm not sure if it was thousands. Okay. Oh, thank you. Just a lot, though. Yeah, a lot. Um, would it be accurate to say they are doing so because they share the same beliefs of their ancestors who also kept the summit of Mauna Kea free from large man-made structures? I would say they did so in opposition uh, to the one additional telescope uh, besides the 13 others. The one additional telescope that would be 18 stories tall. I'm not exactly sure how tall it is. Okay, it, 30 meters. Um, Mr. Babayan, as an educator, does the community benefits package included in the EIS play any role in your support of the TMT project? No. Thank you. Thank you. Throughout your teachings from Papa Mao and throughout his voyages of accompanying our people on their quest for knowledge of our ancestors, 
Did he ever ask you, what's in it for me? No, he never. He, he was a generous individual. So uh, the answer is no. No. Thank you. I have no further questions. Thank you, Ms. Kihoi. Well, let's, let's take a 10-minute break, please. Okay.